Today we are going to concentrate on the building and installing of frames 5 through 2, which go only after the boat here. We're not going to take you through the um, cutting of the frames and the sanding of the frames. We've done a fairly comprehensive job on that in the last video and there's really no need to go through it. So we're just going to go through the issues that relate to these specific frames and look at their, their installation. We've um, made up all the frames, um, cut the templates out, stuck them to the various timbers. Interestingly, I used the band saw this time instead of the scroll saw and was able to cut every single one of these out. Um, it's really a much cleaner um, saw to work with and if you don't have a lot of tight um, curves and corners, uh, it works quite well. In the last video, I had told you that I had a little issue here. It's just short of two inches, so I have to remember to pick that up when I put these, when I come to put in the second batch of frames. Uh, in terms of this side, it's much better it's probably only about one inch out yeah it's probably even less than an inch out on this side so there's very little adjustment that has to be made at this at this point in time we're coming up to the end of the framing exercise and uh, the stock of wood that i purchased i think i got it from modeler's boatyard is starting to come close to the end and seem to be short of nine and a half um, thick stock um, but I do have a fair amount of juniper which is a local wood um, which I can use and there's very little shade difference between the juniper and I think this is boxwood I'm not 100% sure I can't remember back that far This is the stockpile of wood that I have. This is juniper here, which is there's quite a bit of it. Um, it's all been put on the milling machine, um, three inch thick, three inch wide. Um, so I have a fair amount of stock that I can go to. This is um, coffee wood, which is fairly white. This dark wood here is dark green heart, um, specially selected from a friend of mine. Um, um, this is some sea grape, which a friend of mine gave me, and it's a red wood, very, very pretty. Um, and a small amount of purple heart, um, which again uh, is a hard wood. Um, when you first cut it, it's uh, deep purple. Um, over time, it tends to get very dark. So I'll be I'll be going into my stock. Um, this is a piece of coffee wood, just to give you an idea of how it comes. This is a coffee tree, which is really a vine. And it's a beautiful, dense, white wood. Um, give you an idea. Um, the, the whitest wood and has almost no grain in it. Um, certainly down here in Trinidad, uh, juniper has been my find and it's again a, a very hard wood with almost no grain um, and this is really going to be the foundation of all my builds going forward because it's easily available uh, locally. I was uh, cleaning the shop today and came across this piece of ebony um, that was given to me oh, quite a few years ago from a good friend Richard had eaten. Um, and it's as dark as they say it is, it's as dense as they say it is. I have no idea when I'm going to use it, but um, it does form part of my stock and it must be drying here for over 10 years. And this is the raw stock. Um, this is juniper that has yet to be taken down. 
this I can't remember I think this is a piece of black heart and this redwood here which is I've shown you I made some of my boxes out of it is called Kabukali and it's a beautiful wood but very brittle and very difficult to work with so I've laid out all the frames all the parts are here they've all, all been cleaned up and ready to assemble learning from our last um, video we've um, followed the same trend we're building the eight frames highlighted in orange and looking very much at the National Maritime Museum ZAZ4691 this time has pointed out um, everything is clear there's no difference between the instructions in the book there is the cast timber at frame 4 aft. There is a shifted timber at 2 aft. The sweep port stills are recessed into frame 2 aft. Um, I'm not sure the exact depth. The only other unique reference to this part of the build is a reference made to a solid piece of wood above three aft at the hands. The hands is that curved piece on the on the rail and that it butts against the top timber four aft right here. Um, I'm gonna ignore that for now as I'm not a hundred percent sure how that's built and I can't find any detailed reference to it. We're going to start building the frames and I just thought I would um, point out a little improvement in my technique for lining up the various parts of the frame. You may remember that each time I would um, make up um, one of these parts I'd drill two holes to keep the, the various pieces from moving and so that would move and then I do the same thing on each one of these and of course that has resulted in lots of holes in the pieces which doesn't do any harm but it's really not a good thing and as I gone along I realized we only need one hole because we're building from this the bottom coming up and so what I do is I line up each one and it actually helps and um, it speeds up making the film making the um, part because when we go to put the epoxy it's simply a matter of putting the epoxy on both ends and then just putting it in we said we would show you each of the unique frames and uh, fore aft um, is the side of the gun port frame and it needs to be shifted forward so to do that instead of the nine and a, nine and a half thick piece we actually have a piece that is in this case I've made it 12 inches thick and we're sticking it with a chalk the same way we normally do except we then put it on the, the table saw and, um, and create the cast here's the frame I'm just waiting on the glue to dry um, the top timber is 12 inches and the chalk was 12 inches um, which gives us a little bit of flexibility as to where exactly we um, put the cast. Before we do that, we need to transfer these measurements onto the frame, which we've done, putting it back on um, to the assembly board to make sure that uh, both the left side and the right side are exactly the same. To make sure that we have no mistakes, we've actually penciled in the, um, the areas that are need to be cut on all the surfaces. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because I've made these mistakes before and we've set the blade um, exactly at this height and a simple way to do that is you simply put it over 
and if when you push the saw it touches the blade at all you know the blade is too high. Of course, you have to be very careful when you're going to cut the bevel for the cast that you don't shake up the frame too much, otherwise you'll break the joint because I haven't pinned it as yet. And that's exactly what happened here. Two after is a shifted timber. Uh, we stuck the base of the frame. We've used chocks. So we've used this two inch spacer um, as we've done before. The part that's shifted forward is pinned and we'll stick the two and we'll end up with a shifted frame. All the frames are now complete. Um, we just have to drill to put the um, dowels or tree nails in. I know it's a bit of a pain um, for the two sets of frames that we have to put the uh, submerge wide spacers. Um, when you cut them on the table saw, so they end up with little frayed edges, and you really need to take the frayed edges off, otherwise, it's going to give you problems on the model. So, do it now. Where it's easier to do it later when you'll grumble and swear. <laughs> All well, the tree nails are now in, the spacers are on, and this time we sanded them so they're not sticking out like we've done in the past, and ready to install.
we have stuck a 8 inch block um, to take up the spacing for this sweep port and temporary lined up frame to aft and then we're just verifying that it's square and it is and the same on that side My goal was to finish um, all the framing before the end of the year, but this is the Monday before Christmas and that's just not possible and the family is heading off to Tobago until the new year. So I want to thank everybody who has given me feedback and helped me through this, particularly Greg um, who's ready emails keep me plodding along. And we'll see you all in the new year when we finish the framing on the HMS Thorn. So, from Trinidad, from the Thorn, have a wonderful new year.